Today I'll be continuing work on the horizontal stabilizer in-spar ribs. These are the eight most inboard ribs on the horizontal stabilizer. And in the last video, I showed where I removed portions of some of these flanges in order to make room for the stringers and stringer web. The first thing I'll do today is use these fluting pliers to flute the flanges, flute the flanges, flute these flanges in order to remove any curvature that's imparted, that was imparted in these ribs during the manufacturing process. And they don't seem all that bad to me, to be perfectly honest, but I'll be testing them against the flat table here, trying to get them as flat as possible. The other thing I'm going to be doing is on these two most inboard of the inspar ribs, they are angled out slightly to follow the, uh, the angle of the tail cone. So they're not parallel to the rest of the ribs and not perfectly perpendicular to the spars. So I'll be using these, uh, this hand seamer to bend this rear flange out by about nine degrees. And then I'll also be putting a bend here in the web to bend this part of it uh, back nine degrees the other way. So that's what I'm gonna do today. Okay, so hopefully you can see on the camera that when I lay this flat on the table with the flanges down, it's not quite flat. It's not quite, uh, the rib's not quite flat. Now it bows up in the center here, but I'm not too worried about that because this part right here is, you know, pretty, pretty easily bent and that'll form right into shape uh, when it's riveted in place in the skin. But these areas where the flanges were formed, what happens is it stretches and it puts a curve this way. And so I need to come back in and flute between these holes and just tighten this up just a little bit to take that curve out of it. And so what I was doing was holding this down and then now you can see that it's got a little bit of a curve that way. The other thing I need to do, and they don't tell me to do this at the step I'm on in the plans, but when you look in section five about fluting, they tell you to also adjust the flanges to be 90 degrees with the web, which they're not, and they aren't going to be. So it's going to be impossible to show. But if I take a straight edge there, I can see that this is not 90 degrees. Now there's a couple of ways to bend that. I can use the hand seamer, which I've done in the past, or some blocks of wood with slots cut in it, which I've made a couple of these and because the hand seamer is too big, for example, to get in here uh, on these guys. And frankly, I find that the piece of wood, the block of wood, is actually a little gentler, it seems. The, uh, the metal hand seamer will put some marks. I used it a lot on the vertical stabilizer ribs, and it left some marks up under here. So I thought I'd give the wood a try. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to go too crazy on trying to get the end flanges that made up against the spar to 90 degrees yet because when I start fluting this and pull this in it'll change the angle of this thing. But I don't want to flute these before I try to get them 90 degrees because I won't be able to get my block of wood on here or use the hand seamer without squishing the flute back out. So what I'm going to do is try to get these to around 90 degrees, close enough, uh, with these blocks of wood, just working at it carefully. And then I'll come along with the fluting pliers and try and flute it and get it so that when I hold these down, that this lays pretty flat at each of these, each of these sections of the flange. Honestly, when I do that, it'll probably make this worse. But again, I'm not concerned about that because if I wanted to, I could just sit here and bend this a little bit. But it'll be held in place once it's inside the skin. So let's see how much of this I can show on the camera. I want to say these little blocks of wood were something that they told you to make in the one of the practice kits, the aileron practice kit. 
I didn't make them at the time because I had the hand seamer and thought, I don't need anything as primitive as a block of wood with a slot cut in it. I've got this special tool. I think this does just as good a job and maybe better. At least for some of it. I'm not saying don't buy the hand seamer. So let's see how we get there. Alright, not quite, but getting there. Maybe I'll do a little more and then I'll start fluting. Oops. So my little block of wood has an angle on it, so that I can bend it this way. Yeah. You may not be able to tell, but I'm actually pushing down a good bit because I don't want to just bend the web. I want to try to tighten the radius or tighten the curve that's already there. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Pretty good. All right. So, now, it's probably actually made that a little worse, which is not bad. Let's compare that to one I haven't done yet. Mm, hard to tell. Actually, one thing you can judge it against is these little tabs, because I didn't try to bend those. Uh, which I will, but they're so small, they're just going to kind of go along anyway. And besides, they're a little hard to get up in there. Yeah, there's nothing easy to overdo those, probably. They're also so, so small that I, they're, well, you know what, a couple of things. Those are, those are going to be up under the spar. Uh, the spar flange and therefore will not really affect any, put any kind of waviness in the skin. So I'm not going to go crazy on this. All right, let's flute. So what I may try to do, now you want to make sure you have these in the right direction. So that the V, the flute goes in. What I may try to do okay. All right, I'll put a little more on there. Alright, so when I hold that down, now this guy does not stick up. At least not much. I may caution you, caution you in the plans in section 5 not to confuse twist with bow. Twist doesn't matter. Bow you want to take out. So I'm pretty happy with that, actually. Okay, so I've finished squaring up and fluting all of the flanges on the eight inboard in spar ribs. 
Uh, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. As with anything, you get better as you go along. By the time I was doing the last one, I pretty much had a good feel for how much uh, force it was going to take to bend the flanges, get them pretty much 90 degrees, and as well as how much flute to put in them to straighten everything out. I did go back and sort of bend this part of the web a little bit to take that, that bow out, and so they're all pretty good and flat. And most importantly, uh, I can take a straight edge and put it along and, and all the holes are in a nice straight line, which is what you're really trying for. So uh, a couple of lessons learned, I suppose. I actually found that I was better uh, at bending the flanges with a simple block of wood with a slot cut in it, kind of like they suggest you make in one of the practice kits, I think it was. Uh, the hand seamer works, but it's, I mean, it's certainly you know, got plenty of oomph for the job, but it is kind of bigger than some of these flanges, and uh, the other thing is it's just heavier and harder to get a feel for. You know, this light little piece of wood, I just, you know, I really seem to just be able to feel my way through it a little better. So, and uh, the, the wood is a little gentler on the inside of the, of, of this corner here, right? So, you know, this, this can scrape it up just a little bit, and the wood doesn't do that. So, Kind of like the wood block. Uh, as far as the fluting pliers work, they work just fine. Again, I by the time I was doing number eight, I got a pretty good feel for you know just how much to flute uh, on the, the first pass through. So anyway, really happy with how all that turned out. So now the next step is to take these two ribs. So these are the two that have both pieces of uh, flange on either side of this notch cut away. And these are the inboard most of the two ribs. These will go uh, at a slight angle to follow the angle of the tail cut. So what that means is I've got to bend this flange out this way by about nine degrees and I've got to bend this part of the web back the other way by about nine degrees so that they'll mate up correctly with the, the rear and front spar. So I'm gonna do this back part Either I'll probably do it with my little wood block. Um, use the the hand seamer, but like I said, I'm kind of um, liking how that wood block works, so I'll probably use it. As for this part, the plans tell you to just sort of put it against a table and push on it. <laughs> so that's what I'll try and do. I'll certainly feel my way through that carefully. Uh, as for how I'm going to know what nine degrees really is, well. Once again, wood blocks. I've uh, cleverly measured, marked, and cut. Uh, what does this say? It looks like it says 18, but it's 81 degrees and 9 degrees. So I should be able to you know, use these blocks to measure. That should give me 9 degrees when I'm like that. And this one ought to be a little more finicky, but I hopefully will be able to poke that up under there and get a feel for what 9 degrees is there. So that is what I'm going to try and do. Okay, nine degrees. All right, nothing to it. Now, this part. This bend can be accomplished by holding the forward portion of the rib against a solid surface and pressing down along the bend line with your fingers. The part will bend along the bend line between the two notches shown in the figure. Okay, so they say I almost want to stand up on something here. Oh, boy. It will. Oh, my goodness. Whoa, yikes. Well, frankly, that seems kind of rough. 
but I guess it worked. Well, nine degrees. not quite enough. Okay. I guess it's probably okay that it'd be a gentle bend. We would want that, right? Right? Looks like the picture. Not crazy about, I mean, what else is it going to do, right? I'd like to see how someone else does that. But it looks like 9 degrees to me. Alright, let's do this one. All right, so I won't lie, making those last couple of bends in the web of these uh, these two ribs was a little scary, but it came out all right. Uh, couldn't help jumping ahead here and pulling out the front and rear spar and going ahead and clico in those two ribs in here just to get a feel for the, the shape of things. And it looks pretty good. The the nine degrees there, nine degrees there, those, those flanges made up real nice. So I'm happy with that. Uh, Jumping ahead even further, I went and got the stringer web here. And you can see how that will fit between these two ribs. And then uh, these are the stringers, the short and long stringers. I think the short one goes in the front. I think I'm doing this right. I haven't checked that closely in the plans, but uh, just to get a feel for it. So those will sit right down in there. And those notches that we cut, well, the notches that were there and the places where the flange was removed. And uh, there'll be two more on the underside. And so you can see how that sort of creates a, sort of an additional miniature spar right here in the center. Uh, probably, probably needs to come back a little bit. Anyway, um, yeah, so... Pretty cool. I'm looking forward to, I still got a lot of ribs to work on here before I can get to this point. I've got to do all the nose ribs and then there's, uh, those are eight, the eight inspar ribs that'll get me out to about here. And then there'll be, I think, eight more ribs that, uh, you know, build out the rest of the, of the structure in here. But, uh, it's coming along. in these parts. I just wanted to see how they how they lined up. And we're flushing the toilet. 